All right, this morning, moving all the stock. This is our fed a lot. The brake just there. Yeah, uh, let's roll the fence up and get on with it. So we're going to split the last piece of the paddock in half and that'll do Sunday, Monday. Alright, so this piece here has been split in half. You can't quite see it, but there's a, a fence across there. Uh, they'll get fenced into this break because we've got a water trough right here. So we'll just run this reel around that water trough back down to the fence. It means they've got water and it just keeps them off this piece that's already been grazed because they will go in that direction up the farm they came in off the tanker drive there's a crossing down there so um yeah that's the plan with these guys um there's another channel i didn't find it i actually got told about it eat sleep farm repeat um he's i think he's a crop farmer dairy support unit down in uh the south island a really good channel is something different I've really enjoyed watching it just uh, it's different to what we do up here um, yeah it's amazing same country but uh, different farming style so yeah check them out girls so what we're doing here is the cows are grazing new grass it's a bit it's been a bit wet over the last few days so I didn't want to put them straight onto the new grass risk of nitrate poisoning it's better to be safe than sorry so what we're doing is we're break feeding this paddock off so they're just getting a break here in the morning but only an hour here and then just running them back straight back over the race and they'll get their next break which will be here so, and also feeding up a bale of silage in there. So it's better to be safe than sorry. Um, I don't want to lose any cows to nitrate poisoning. Um, so we're also giving them quite big breaks so they're not decking this paddock. I never like decking the new grass. I like looking after it. Um, also, these cows are the skinnier cows. So they're getting plenty of feed because they're getting a feed here. And then they're coming in here and they're getting a good feed in here. Like you can see what they're leaving behind and they were put in there at about nine o'clock yesterday. So they've, you know, left quite a bit behind. So they're, that's, well, that's how I gauge it. If they're getting fed well, they're leaving some behind. So they'll be happy to get in here, get a feed of grass here. So the reason why I'm giving them a feed of this grass is just filling their bellies up on uh, grass that's established grass because you don't have the risk of nitrates in established grass. Come on, girls. 
Still got one calf in here, I haven't dealt with it yet. And also, same, giving them a bit of uh, silage means they've uh, got something else in their belly while they're eating. So, yeah, better be safe than sorry. I don't want to lose any cows, so that's what I'm doing. So we'll leave these here, and I'll shift uh, this fence, and we'll feed out a bale of silage, and then we should go to the runoff, do the runoff, and then come back and shift these over the road. So it'll be the last thing we do. All right, Anders, should we go and get the tractor? Yeah, you like the tractor, eh? Bale. Bale, yeah. He knows. He's keen. Still a few weeds in here, but we haven't actually had a good frost yet. So, um, well, we have had frost, but not many in a row. So, um, the frost will knock it back, but we will do a pasture spray on the new grass. But it's growing really well. I'm happy. Uh, my dad always said that this paddock never grew very well, so... Hopefully with this grass species base in it, um, hopefully it grows well. I like base, I use it all the time as you would know. Some of the cows are waiting to come back in, they know, they know what I'm doing. Bear. All right, start it up Anders. Art. Turn it, try. Art. You can do it. We're on the fed today, got to take the spreader off it. Um, the guy that we leased some land off, one of the runoffs, he's just cut the top off a shout about, well, um, I'll show you that when we go down there. But I've been meaning to do this, make up a um, grill guard because uh, I do quite a bit of firewood and I'm always worried that a stick's going to come through the forks and go in there. So I just welded a bit of mesh on there. It's actually really strong. It works quite well, looks good, so it'll do the trick. All right. Let's get in the tractor, Anus. Yeah. yeah, this one. The feed actually needs its brakes doing every now and then it loses the fluid out of the brake pedal. So uh, it's actually booked in to get done. It's just a matter of when it gets done. So these are the trees that have had the top taken out of them. So it's a, a digger with just a, it's really just a shear. It just grabs, grabs the tree with clamps and then it's got a blade that just comes in underneath and just, just shears it off, gives a little bit of a wobble and pulls it off. They look a bit, uh, you know, they don't look the flashiest now, but he's done some on the other side a couple of years ago and they look really good. Um, so it's gonna, improve hopefully improves the pasture a bit over here it'll let a bit more light and um, not be so shaded because it's such a narrow piece there the um not much sun gets in there so we'll still get the shelter but we uh, won't get the shading so much so he's going to clean he's going to use our trader to clean those up there's stacks of them in there Here we have the beefies. So this paddock here was actually um, I drilled base into it, direct drilled base. And before when it was just nipped off, like after they had grazed it, um, you could really see the lines. But the base is really growing. The, it's so mild at the moment 
um, compared to last year we had quite a cool May early June but this year it's been a lot warmer so it's good for the grass growth really uh, gets it moving these guys are getting silage and grass every day every day they get a break so we'll be looking at selling some of these oh, another month or two So that's the calves done. Got a couple of bales of hay, a bit of extra feed, a bit of roughage. So they're looking good. I'm not going to go for a walk down and earn them, but they're getting pretty well fed. They. The video I did of uh, why we stand the cows off. The next morning I come up and the cows had uh, they'd undone the latch on those two gates at the back there, and they got into the pit. Or into the bales so they were standing all down the bales and I've got this dried on crap because I don't know when they got in there the cows were stood off at about half past three and yeah they got dried on crap now all over this have to water blast it but it was just crap on the rails crap along here it was actually a heifer down in here I had the cups hanging up on the jetters and half the cups were just lying on the ground in the mud because the, there was a heifer in there but yeah got the gate unlatched so I just now I tie it up so that they can't get it undone. But <laughs> it's what I didn't want. So I ended up spending half an hour hosing it out before I left so that at least it wouldn't all dry on. They already got four bellies ready to go and have some new grass. I want that on the hot wire. Straight into the silage slash hay. It's just dry, real dry silage, which is actually quite good. It's perfect for this time of the year. I purposely didn't feed it out because I knew that it was quite dry and uh, fed out all the good silage earlier on. So yes, these cows are a bit lighter. They're not real bad, but they're definitely lighter, so they are going to look a bit skinnier. Bye, girls. Come on. Are those three messing around? I drafted out the two skinny ones that I talked about too in that video where I stood the cows off, those two at the back. I drafted them out of the fatter mob into the skinny mob. She's got a sore foot. I've had her looked at by the hoof man and 
I actually think it's a hip rather than a foot. Uh, it's not swollen, her foot's not swollen, so. And she's got a little bit of eczema, that one. All right, so back at the cows that are on the new grass. It is uh, nearly half past one. I just thought I'd come down here and show you how much they've got through and what, the, what they've still got left to eat. It's a lovely day. It turned out to be a real nice afternoon. Bit of blue sky around, nice and warm, quite mild. Once the um, once they've finished this new grass, we could get some urea on it and uh, get it cranking. But um, you can see the cows have got pretty full bellies. But they've still got a little bit to eat. There's, uh, all I can hear is actually cows eating, if you're real quiet. Looking nice and shiny. She's my one of my favorite looking cows. She's good stature. Standing there just enjoying the sunshine. So yeah, thought I'd just bring you up here to have a look at them. They always look better when they've had a feed. Yeah, people say they look skinny. You know, you normally first thing in the morning. I've had a few people comment, the cows look skinny when you're first moving them, but they haven't had anything to eat. They've eaten their ration for the day and they're waiting there for the next lot of feed. So that's how we do it in New Zealand, generally. We, especially through the winter, we've got to slow them down. And we're on a 100 day round, we need to slow them down and uh, so we can save grass for right the way through because we don't put them in sheds and barns. So yeah, right, I'm actually off to Teat Seal and Avis Heifers, so better carry on. Thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you somewhere else on the farm. See ya.